Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to watercolor a harvest moon, but this video could also be entitled Handling Your Hot Mess Moments. We have all had those moments, and this card is going to provide one of them, so you get to see some hot messes along the way with the cute little witch and the ghost. Fun little sentiments in this stamp set as well. I have it all stamped on some watercolor paper. This is the cold press arches. And I've drawn in a moon by using a roll of tape. Just a little circle there. The reason that I started doing this was earlier this summer, actually right around the time I was filming this one a while back, there was these really weird skies we had because of a bunch of fires. It's been a heck of a fire season all over the country, but we had our little bout with it where I live, and we had a really strange looking sky one day. It was an orangey, yellowy kind of sky, and as it got towards sunset, the, the sun itself turned this really weird color. And I, it got me thinking about harvest moons. So when I was gonna do a Halloween card, I thought, well, let's do a really cool harvest moon. And I started looking for pictures. Found one that had an orange sky, like the one that I saw. And the moon itself was richly colored. It wasn't like a light moon at all. It was really this, I don't know, kind of darkish yellow. It had all these yellow and, you know, like darker yellow and orangey and brown kind of spots in it. It was really, really an amazing photograph. If you just look up Harvest Moon, you'll see a lot of really interesting stuff. So anyway, I started painting my sky with quinacridone burnt orange, and then the moon is mostly quinacridone gold. And I wanted to see if I could get some of that movement going between the two, that I could get them bleeding. So I painted them right up to the edge of each other. And you can see there's, in a few spaces, there's a little white gap there. Because I was trying to see if I could get them to merge to each, into each other but not real evenly. I wanted it to be this kind of loose thing. So that part started working okay. I wanted it build on the sky, so I'm going to add more color to it, but I wanted this orange undertone to the whole thing. And then I had to figure out how to end it, so I just kept going with getting that yellow lighter as it got down further in the picture. And I wanted everything to stay where it was. I don't often do heat setting when I'm watercoloring, because I like the watercolor to be able to do what it wants. But when something is really good and that was looking really awesome, I said, oh, let me dry it and heat set it so that it's really dry when I do my glazing for my sky. And this is where things started going awry. I was doing my glazing. I had my purple color all mixed up. I dipped my brush in to make some more of the, the orangey color. And look at that. I've got blooms appearing because that paint is thinner than the purple paint. And then I was like, oh no, no, what do I do? Okay, so, you know, breathe. When you're doing this and this happens, just breathe. And I'm gonna just mix the colors together and push that water around so it's even across the whole thing. It's kind of like mixing in the palette, but I'm just mixing on the paper instead to try to even out the water so that the water is not puddling up in one place. And then I can start dropping in heavier color thicker that thicker purple paint and I even added more purple to it so it would be thicker and then start dropping it in and I it gave me the option to have this kind of mottled sky anyway which was fine and that's kind of the look I was going for and yeah then I had to figure out how to end that before I got to the the land so there's a lot of decisions being made along the way. I thought, oh let me just continue some of that orangey color and maybe make the land a little darker and that was too dark or well, it was very dark for that top portion i wanted that to get lighter so i was trying to use a dry-ish brush because i didn't want to put more water in once i'd already made that mistake once and then i thought oh i could do some shadows like she's got shadows coming from the moon won't that be cool well wait a minute there would be a shadow on the left of her not just on the right of her so now what do i do i've totally screwed that up right so i've got my my great shadow on the right hand side so no, I just lifted. I took a clean, dry brush and just lifted color. And it gave me a really soft edge on one side, hard edge on the other. It was kind of cool. So my lesson 
to you in all of this, and it's something that I do all the time when I'm watercoloring, is keep going. Just keep working at it. If you take the take a, a class from me called Watercolor Jumpstart, I don't know if it's going to be live by the time this video goes out. If it is, go take it. And if not, then watch <laughs> for an announcement when the class is coming out. But I talk a lot about water management. And that was the reason that I could do this card and have these these kind of water issues work out in my favor because I was paying careful attention to how much water was in my brush and what the mixes were in my palette. In the class I'll actually show you the palettes so you can watch the paint being mixed. Didn't have that going on here but I'm loving what's going on around that moon. I love that the orange is pushing out into the sky and I've just got this push-pull going on right around the edge of that moon and I'm, I'm kind of liking it at this point. I'm kind of pleased with where it went. And this whole thing is kind of an exercise in water management for me. I'm learning just like you're learning. And it's really, it, like watercolor is just one of those things you have to keep practicing. And even in the class, I can't tell you mix this much water and this much pigment. You have to practice it and learn it on your own. Even I'm learning it. You watched me make a mess here. <laughs> it's just what happens when we start painting. So I did all that background work first because if I totally wrecked it, I wasn't going to spend all my time painting the images. I just restamp and start all over again. But since I was fairly happy with that, and I, I have a plan for more stuff going along the ground, by the way, I'm going to add some trees in there. But I thought, okay, now it's safe to go and paint everything. So I'm just using a couple of Halloween-ish kind of colors to to start painting these things. You can see it. I once again bled my colors. I didn't wait for my purple to dry and it went right into the orange, but I just dried it, put the orange right over top. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving. And with a card like this, where the background is like this amazing crazy moon and this beautiful sky that came out so cool, I don't even have to worry about putting a whole lot of shading in my image or doing any super amazing coloring on that because the impact that the sky is going to have is really huge. And the characters and stuff in it are important, but they're not uber important. And that's where I was trying to figure out how am I going to keep the focus on that background because I was so proud of how those colors went together. I love when edges are lost and then found and then lost and then found again. And a lot of my watercolor teachers that I've taken classes from are always talking about connecting your images. And here I really felt like I successfully connected the moon and the sky. And it was pretty cool. So I've painted the images and I wanted to add now my trees in the background. So using some uh, black that's actually mixed with some Carbazol Violet because I wanted to reflect some of the violet that's already in here. But I also didn't want my lunar black, which is a highly, highly granulating color, to take over. I didn't want over granulation going on in here. And the Carbazol will cut some of that down just because it's not as granulating. Just scribbling trees in here. And if, I've done lots of videos in the past. If you look through my old videos on doing trees, it's just scribble, 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 making basically triangles with scribbled edges. It's really what trees are. And it really is going to set off the moon to have this real strong contrast right in front of it and then the moon and everything behind it. If you try something like this and then you totally have wrecked the background, just put some trees over the areas that you didn't like. Call it done. So now I was going to figure out, do I need more shading on my images? And then I went, you know, wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm going to try to be brave. The rest of the card came out cool. I want to limit the impact of this little girl and the, and the, ghost that is her buddy. So I decided I'm just going to shade over top of the whole thing. And this is where I was like, oh no, it's going to be a hot mess. It's going to be a hot mess. And there's going to be a hot mess moment here coming because look at my brush. It was too full of paint. I was not thinking because I was all excited and I was trying to do this while it was all wet. And yeah, there you go. So had to dab some of that off. Be careful about how much pigment you pick up on your brush. It's a constant learning and I want you to know that it is constant. So even if I can give you a class that'll tell you that, I still don't do it myself half the time. 
and it's just how it is. It's the life of art and it's the life of watercolor. Watercolor is just a difficult medium and it, it simply is challenging and we're always going to keep learning. So now you can see against white, the color is a little bit better here as I'm trying to add my white details with my pen. After everything's all dry, I have a couple layers of cardstock to just set the thing off and added some stars with my white pen. And I'm just gonna add a few white highlights in a couple areas, just a few things. And if on something like this, the pen ends up looking jarring because it's so white and such a sharp line, just rub it with your finger a little bit and it will start to soften out some of it. Because basically I think what's inside of a white pen is almost like an acrylic paint. So soften that by moving it while it's still wet with your finger and you won't end up with like a huge hard edge. But even though I probably went a little too dark on shading the witch and stuff, I'm really pleased with the outcome of the card. That sky and the moon just makes me giggle. I love the way it just almost looks like the moon is on fire. Really fun and it took some bravery to actually keep moving through it, but I wanna encourage you to continue being brave as you have your hot mess moments as well. So click on some links if you wanna watch more videos, go over to the blog post, and I will see you guys later. Have a really awesome day, go make something beautiful. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.